Hi, and welcome to Mechanical Mashup episode eight. In this episode, Ben's gonna show you how to get more control out of your studio lights using a simple dimmer switch, and I'm gonna show you how to make super peanut butter cups. Thanks a lot, Ben, for sending me your pop-out green screen from episode seven. Now, when you're editing, you can put in really cool backgrounds for me as well. So if you like what you see here, just click on the bottom of the player here where it says Facebook group, or if you're watching in YouTube, you'll have to go to Facebook and search Mechanical Mashup and you'll find our fan page. Click to join as a fan, it's really simple to do and you'll get uh, extra photos, biographies, upcoming projects, and just lots of news and information on what kind of things we're into and what we're doing. You can also tell us what you wanna see from us. And now I'm going to show you how to make super peanut butter cups! Tis I, the mighty mega mechanical mashup bo boy! What? Who? <sighs> Even though these super peanut butter cups are easy to make, I wish I had a sidekick or two. Oh look, it's Brody Man. The human tornado! Hey, wait! How come he's a man? Stop whining! Hey, hey! It's Butterfly Girl! You are, oh, sidekick! First thing we're gonna need is a container. You can use anything Tupperware, ice cube trays that are funky looking, ice cube trays that are regular. Uh, you can make your own shapes like I've done here, but that's for another episode how we do that. If you want to get really crazy and you have enough peanut butter, hey, there's a big one. That would be super. Keep the heat low. Stir the chocolate lots. I use two different colors. Then you can use one of the colors to actually paint an image on there. He's not making a happy face, he's making a super happy face. Put it in the freezer and that hardens the chocolate up again. Take a different color than your pitcher and cover the bottom. Couple smacks on a hard surface, spreads it out. Put it back in the freezer again. You mix up peanut butter and icing sugar, but don't be afraid to add other things as well. Uh, Rice Krispies are cool. My wife even had the idea of putting a slice of banana in with it. Pipe it into the chocolate. And then cover over the peanut butter mix with more chocolate. You can use different colors here. Give it a smack down to get rid of any voids. Don't worry about a bit of spill on top. That just cracks off afterwards. And last time, freeze it. Then after we pull them out of the freezer, we pop them out of the containers, and this is what we have. And now, we do battle! They were no match for us. LisaFarrells.com Custom artwork on canvas. Custom artwork on skateboards. Custom grip tape jobs. Custom artwork on anything. LisaFarrells.com And now, Ben's going to show us a really cool hack for your shop lights in your studio and how to adjust them using a simple dimmer switch. Now, while Dave's having fun with his peanut butter cups, the guy that's been hit by lightning twice and terrified of electricity is going to rewire some lights. Not that I'm bitter, Dave. No, no, I'm okay with this. Anyways, we're going to take the lights that we built in a previous episode and we're going to put a dimmer switch on them. Make sure everything's unplugged. Be safe. 
And then on the inside, what you'll find is three more rats and some screws that you need to undo that lock down the cables on the way in. And yes, you could have cut the wires. I just wanted to avoid having to strip everything, seeing as it's already been nicely stripped. There's no point in redoing that effort. So what we have there is the dimmer switch, a junction box. We have some tension fittings for the wires, which also happen to be waterproof and some marrettes. Now the PVC junction box didn't have three holes in it. You can get ones with three holes in it, but I didn't want to waste my time looking for it. So I just got an extra fitting that I could glue in and I'm just going to cut a hole into it that's one inch in diameter that will fit the three quarter inch fitting. And I know that makes a whole lot of sense, but well, that's just the reality of it. So after that, all you have to do is clean out the hole you made and test fit the uh, PVC fitting that you have. And in the end, I cut that PVC fitting down so that it didn't stick into the box too far and there was plenty of room for all the stuff that I was gonna put in. So the next thing we do is glue that bad boy into the junction box. And uh, this glue is messy and it will get all over you and there's nothing you can do about it. Just live with the fact that you're gonna get all messy and gross and carry on. Make sure you give yourself half an hour for this glue to set up. When you put those tension fittings in, you have to screw them in and you could spin that fitting out if it's not completely set. Glue in the rest of the fittings and they're all threaded to take the tension fittings. Now make sure that you take all the parts that you need to and put them on the wires before you stick them in the box and wire everything up inside of the box or you know because i wouldn't do anything like that no no and i wouldn't invent some new expletives oh good lord no i wouldn't do that no make sure you put all that stuff on there first because it can be pretty frustrating after you've put everything together to have to take it all apart again Once you have all those tension fittings, thread the wires into the junction box. And then what you're going to do is you're going to look at the instructions for your dimmer switch and you're going to wire everything up accordingly. You know, grab the wires, put them together, screw them right onto the ends of the wires, sort of like, you know, how friends screw you around with projects while they sit there in the kitchen and cook nice things. You're stuck in the shop wiring things up even though you're afraid of electricity. Not that I'm bitter. No, 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 no. So of course, once you've got all this stuff, you test fit inside the box, make sure everything fits in nice and tight. And as you can see, you'll end up pissing around with it for quite a while, making sure that everything fits, but eventually you'll get it all to fit in nice and tight. And of course, before you lock everything down, make sure it works. So we can see it works here, so we're just going to screw the plate onto the top and add the button to use for the control and tighten down the tension fittings and we should be off to the races. So for about 20 minutes of your time in the shop and 20 minutes at the hardware store, you will have a dimmable light system for your video studio, photo studio, or even just for your shop pretty handy little hack for those lights. So thanks again for tuning in to episode 8. I hope you guys liked watching it as much as we liked making it. If you do enjoy the show, make sure to check us out on Facebook and become a fan. And thank you very much to our sponsor, LisaFarrows.com. Check her out.